So you're running Rancher at home and up until now, you've been able to access the UI over your local network. And that's been running fine, but you access it over HTTP or HTTPS with a self-signed certificate. And recently, you started using Let's Encrypt and Traffic to get certificates for all of your services. And the one service you haven't been able to expose is the Rancher UI. Also, you'd like to take advantage of some of the authentication providers that Rancher has. Well, don't worry, we're gonna take care of that today. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're gonna to talk about exposing your Rancher UI securely using traffic, Let's Encrypt, and a third-party authentication provider. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you wanna continue the conversation about Rancher there, we can. So let's talk about making a Rancher UI accessible securely. In a previous video, we set up a reverse proxy using traffic and Let's Encrypt so that you can access all your services securely. This helped us get SSL, set up our reverse proxy and routing, as well as give us a quick and easy way to get new certificates for new services. This was a game changer because it allowed us to get certificates very easy. But you haven't figured out how to expose the Rancher UI over your own SSL certificate. Now I get it, if you're running the Rancher UI over the default ports, you get Acme and Let's Encrypt. And it's pretty easy to get SSL certificates that way. You just expose port 80, port 443, set up your CNames or DNS, and in a couple of minutes you have certificates. But if you remember, we chose to host Rancher on different ports. And this was intentional so that we could allow traffic to handle HTTP and HTTPS. And so now how do we get Rancher behind the reverse proxy? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. So today, in this video, we're gonna set up Rancher behind a reverse proxy so that we can get SSL certificates using Let's Encrypt. Then, after we get that set up, we're gonna set up authentication using a third-party provider. Then, the rest is up to you. So with that out of the way, let's get started. First, we'll go into our Rancher server. You'll wanna be sure that traffic is set up already. Once it is, and you're getting SSL certificates for your other services, we'll move on to creating a service for our Rancher UI. So we'll do this in our default cluster. You can do that by going global, cluster, default cluster. Here, you'll see all the workloads you already have set up. But next, let's create a service for our Rancher UI. So we'll click Service Discovery, and let's click Add Record. Here, you'll want to name this service. I'll name mine Rancher UI. Next, we'll want to change the target IP. Now, this is going to be the IP address that your Rancher UI is hosted on. You can see in my example, I'm using 192.168.0.211. Next, we'll want to click on Show Advanced Options. Here, we'll want to create a headless service. I've named mine Rancher UI, and I've chosen the ports 9091. This is the HTTPS port that you spun up Rancher with. And if you followed my guide, it should be 9091. And if that's good, we can hit create. The next thing we should do is create a load balancer. However, we want to take care of a few things before we do that. Because once we do that, it will be exposed to the public. So let's take care of a few things first. So you want to be sure to create a DNS record for your Rancher server. Now this can be an A record or a C name, depending on how you set up your DNS, but you'll want to make sure that that DNS name resolves to your public IP. And you can use something like Dig Web Interface to check that. Here I've tested with Google.com, but you'll want to replace this with your domain name. You'll want to verify here that the name servers resolve to your public IP for your DNS record. Then we'll want to verify our account. Now if you set up Rancher UI with the default admin credential with possibly a weak password, now's the time to change it. You can do that by going to Cluster, Global, and once we're here, we'll go to Security, then Users. Here you'll probably see the admin account that it suggested when you spun up Rancher for the first time. Now I would probably create a new admin account with a very strong password. So to do that, we'll click Add User. You'll want to create a unique and secure username. Then you'll want to create a secure password. Now, if you need help creating a secure password, you can click the Generate button. Then you can give it a display name. Next, we'll want to change the global permissions from Standard to Administrator. Then we'll scroll down and create our account. So once we've done that, we now have two admin accounts. Now, I've used the example Super Admin, but you should probably use something a little more obscure than that. But anyway, let's delete our old account so that no one can access it. Delete. And if you try to delete it, you may see that you can. That's because we need to log out and log back in as our new account. You can't delete the account you're logged in as. So we'll log out, we'll log in with our new account, go back to global, then we'll go back to user, then we'll delete our old account. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Again, this is just to ensure that when we expose this, it's not a weak password. And we're gonna use a third-party provider here soon. 
Okay, one more thing you might want to set up before we do this. You might want to create a host entry on your local machine or a local DNS entry on your local DNS system to point to this IP address of your rancher server. This will help with testing and it allows you to access your rancher UI over a domain name on your local subnet. And if you don't know how to set up local DNS on your local network, you can add an entry to your host file, but that will only work on this machine. And it won't affect it publicly, it's just so you can access it over that domain name on your local subnet. But anyway, the next thing we need to do is change a setting within traffic. So we set up traffic under a cluster, your cluster name, and then system. Then we'll click on apps and we can see traffic here. We'll want to click upgrade here and here we'll see our traffic YAML. Here we'll add one more flag under SSL. Here we're going to add the flag insecure skip verify. Now I know what you're thinking that this sounds pretty scary because typically you would want to verify all the certificates in between. However, this is just the security verification between traffic and your service that's running. So in our case, it's between traffic and the Rancher UI. The problem is, is that Rancher uses its own self-signed certificate, and it's not so easy to swap this out, especially after you've set up Rancher. Now I think Rancher is going to fix this in the future, but it's really hard to switch out a certificate after you've spun up Rancher. And this setting is typically here to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks. But in our case, and a lot of other people in the forums on traffic, I see them turn this flag on without a problem. And understand that the communication between traffic and Rancher will still be encrypted, as well as traffic to the browser to Rancher. And according to a lot of the forum posts that I saw that this is okay to turn off as long as you have a reason to. Okay, after we add that one setting, we can click upgrade. And this will apply the new configuration to our traffic container. And once that's done, everything should be green. Okay, now we're ready to set up our load balancer and expose Rancher. And we can do that by going back to our default namespace. So we'll go to cluster, default namespace, and then going into load balancing. Once we're here, we'll add an ingress. So let's name this Rancher UI. We'll keep the namespace as default. And here, we'll want to specify a host name to use. This is going to be the DNS record that you created publicly. In this example, I'm going to use rancher.example.com. And remember to set this to what you used. Next, it's already created a workload for us, but we want to change this. We want to change this to a service. So let's delete this row. And then we're going to target a backend of a service. And here, we should see our Rancher UI headless service that we created earlier. So let's choose that. And it should have automatically set the port to the port that we set there. In our case, it's 9091. Now there's one more thing we need to do, and this is pretty important. This was the missing link for me. We'll actually need to create an annotation for this. So if we expand labels and annotations, we'll need to add an annotation. And here we'll need to set a key value pair. For the key, it's going to be ingress.kubernetes.io slash protocol, and the value is going to be HTTPS. Now, typically it's set to HTTP, but because Rancher UI is hosted on HTTPS, we need to set this. If you don't set this, it's not going to work because it's going to try to send that traffic over HTTP to our Rancher UI and a Rancher UI isn't listening on HTTP. Well, technically it is, but it's not listening for Rancher UI requests. So we can hit save here. And after you do that, we should have a load balancer exposing our Rancher service. And what also should have happened is that traffic should have requested a certificate for you for Let's Encrypt. And so now you should be able to access your Rancher UI over the DNS name over SSL. And if this doesn't work, remember, you should have set up a host entry or a local DNS entry. But if we click on certificate, we can see that this was issued by Let's Encrypt. So this is really awesome. Now Rancher is exposed publicly. Now you might be asking why would I expose this publicly? Well, you might want to access it on the go. Or you might have some third party services that want to communicate with it. And you'll find out about that in the next video. But anyway, now that we've got this set up, we can actually use third-party authentication providers. So let's do that. So to do that, we'll want to go in global, then go to security and go to authentication. Here we'll see all different kinds of authentication providers. We have Active Directory, Azure AD, GitHub, Ping Identity or Ping Authentication, Keycloak, ADFS, Okta, Shibboleth, Free IPA, Open LDAP and Google. I'm going to go with GitHub because I already have GitHub set up and I have two-factor auth turned on there. If you want to go with another provider, you're welcome to and it's as simple as following the directions below. But let's go with GitHub. So we need to create a new GitHub application. So let's click here. Let's register a new application. And here I'm going to call this Rancher UI. And for the homepage URL, you'll see it at the bottom. 
Now, if this is resolving to a local IP, you won't want to use the local IP there. You'll want to paste the DNS name of your rancher server. So I'll paste mine here, and then we can create an app description if we want. And so I kept mine simple, OAuth for my rancher server. Then we'll want to copy the auth callback URL. And that's down here. And again, if this is resolving to your local IP, it should be resolving to a DNS name. And so we'll paste it in the authorization callback URL, and then we'll click register application. Okay, so now we created our GitHub app. And so now we'll want to copy our client ID and our client secret and paste that into Rancher. And once we've done that, we'll want to click authenticate with GitHub. And now we should see the OAuth prompt to authenticate. We should just click authorize ourselves here. And now we should be able to authenticate with GitHub. And so you can see my profile now and my icon and some details about me. So this means we're authenticated to GitHub. So let's test it out and log out. So now when we land here, we have the option to sign in with GitHub. We can click log in with GitHub and we're signed in with our account. And so I hope you can see how powerful this is to be able to expose your Rancher UI securely over SSL. And the nice thing about this setup is we're managing our SSL certificate using Let's Encrypt that's on top of traffic. This means that we're using the same load balancer for all of our services. And although it was a little bit tricky to figure out, I'm glad that I put my Rancher UI now behind traffic as well. This makes routing and maintaining that certificate just as easy as it is with our other services. And now that we have SSL and we've exposed our Rancher UI securely, that'll set us up nicely for some future videos. So what do you think about exposing Rancher over SSL using traffic? Did you use traffic to expose your Rancher UI or did you do it the default way? Did you run into any problems along the way? Do you not want to expose your Rancher UI at all? If so, let me know in the comments section below. And while you're in the comments, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. I never want people to think that they have to go and buy like this huge server just to get into, you know, um, virtualization to then open all the doors of like testing and playing uh, with new systems, operating systems, services, all the things that are out there. So that's always what I say to people is like, take your old gaming PC, convert that to a server or upgrade your current gaming PC and convert your old one to a server um, and, and start learning from there. And then, then you get a taste of like, okay, do I need enterprise grade stuff? What's the server gonna be used for for real? Like this is kind of for play now. Like if I was going to use it for real and use it for NAS, you know, do I start thinking about, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Just, just thinking about a, a RAID, ECC memory, like all the things that enterprise servers have. And so I, I never want people to think that like, oh, I need all of that before I can start.